And as everyone knows, Marcus Aurelius, your favourite Stoic Emperor, composed his meditations, or Daisi Afton, when he was fighting the Germanic tribes, the Quadi and the Marcomanni, in what is today Austria, or Bohemia. Hi! In this brief video, we're going to talk about one of our favourite emperors, the great Stoic Emperor, Marcus Aurelius. Now, as everyone knows, when Marcus Aurelius died in the year 180 AD, the empire fell into crisis, of course. So, just we'll read an excerpt from his famous book, The Meditations. And, um, in, and in the Greek version, actually, he wrote it in Greek, actually, when he was fighting the, the German tribes, the Marcomanni, the Quali, and other tribes, German Escalian tribes. And in Greek, it's called Da is e afton. Think, let's say, of the times of Emperor Vespasian. And what do you see? Men and women busy marrying, bringing up children, sickening, dying, fighting, feasting, chaffering, farming, flattering, bragging, envying, uh, scheming, calling down curses, grumbling at fate, L loving, hoarding, coveting thrones and dignities. Of all that life, not a trace survives today. All come forward to the days of Emperor Trajan. Again, it is the same, that life too has perished. Take a similar look at the records of other past ages and peoples. Mark how one and all, after the short-lived strivings, passed away and were resolved into the elements. Elements, just like the album by our favourite singer, Mike Oldfield. Right, um, now, more especially, we call some who, within our own knowledge, have followed after vanities. Uh, instead of contenting themselves with a resolute performance of the duties for which they were created, in such cases, it is essential to remind ourselves that the pursuit of any object depends for its value upon the worth of the object pursued. Right. If then you would avoid this discouragement, never become unduly absorbed in things that are not of the first importance. Expressions that were once current have gone out of use nowadays. Names, too, that were formerly household words are officially archaisms today. Like take, for example, the hero Camillus, Kessa, Valesus, Gendatus, a little later, Scipione, Scipio, or Gatta, or the Emperor Augustus, too, and even Emperor Hadrian and Emperor Antoninus. Nice. All things fade into the story past and little while are shrouded in oblivion. Even to men, uh, whose lives were a blaze of glory, this comes to pass, as for the rest, the breath is hardly out of them before. In Homer's words, they were lost to sight alike, and he is saying, uh, What, after all, is immortal fame? An empty, hollow thing. To what, then, must we aspire? This, and to this alone, the just thought, the unselfish act, the tongues that utter no falsehood, the temper that greet each other's passing, event is something predestined, accepted and emanating from one's source and origin. Submit yourself to Glotho. Now, Glotho is one of the three fates, according to Greek mythology. With good, with a good grace, and let her spin your thread out of the material she will. All of us are creatures of a day, the rememberer and the remembered alike. Observe how all things are continually being born out of change. Teach yourself to see what nature's highest happiness lies in changing the things that are, the forming new things after the kind. Whatever is in some sense the seed of what is to emerge from it. Uh, nothing can become a philosopher less than to imagine that seed can only be something that is planted in the earth or the womb. Very soon you will be dead, but even yet you are not simple, single-minded, nor above the squire, yet apprehensive of harm from without, from without, not yet charitable to all men, nor persuaded that to just, justly is only wisdom. Observe carefully what guides the actions of the wise, and what they shun or seek. For you, evil comes not from the mind of another, not yet from any other phases and changes of your, of your bodily frame. From whence? 
the Stoic philosopher uh, Emperor Aurelius asks, from what part of yourself, which acts as your accessor of what is evil, refuses assessment and all is well? The thought, the though the poor body so closely neighbouring it will be gashed or burnt, fester or mortality, or mortified, let the voice of this accessor remain silent. Let it pronounce nothing to be bad or good if it can happen to evil men and good men alike. For anything that comes impartially upon men, whether they do observe the rules of nature or not, can neither be hindering her purposes nor advancing. Always think of the universe as one living organism with a single substance and a single soul and observe how all things are submitted to the single uh, perceptivity of this one whole. All are moved by a single impulse and all pay their part in the, in the causation of every event that happens. Remark the intricacy of the skein, the complicity of the web. A poor soul burdened with a corpse Affected as cause you. To be in process of change is not evil any more than to be a product of change is good. Time is a river that resists flow of all created things. One thing no sooner comes in sight than it's hurried past and another is borne along only to be swept away in its turn. Everything that happens is as normal as and expected as the spring rose of the summer fruit. This is true sickness, death, slander, intrigue, and all the other things that delight all trouble, foolish men. So this is an excerpt from our favourite Stoic philosopher and emperor, Marcus Aurelius, who died in the year 180 AD, ruled from 161 to 180 AD, and with him came the crisis. Useless emperors came and went. Civil War. Marcus Aurelius, one of the greatest emperors Rome ever had, along with Augustus, Claudius, Hadrian, Antoninus Pius, and others. A young Marcus Aurelius. An elderly bearded Marcus Aurelius.